Hi guys and dolls. So today we're completing the Sailor Moon series, which on the one hand I'm super excited about, on the other hand I'm kind of sad just because I've been doing this series for such a long time, much to the frustration of my viewers and to myself. I am so proud of how this turned out. I was really, really excited to do Sailor Moon. As some of my longtime viewers know, the Sailor Moon series has been going on since 2008 and it's now come to a close. You know, we could go on and on about how the series has been dragging and everything and you guys could like throw tomatoes at me and stuff. I'm really excited for it to be complete and for you guys to be able to just watch all the videos. It's such a um, a really great way to look at someone's progress in terms of makeup application. So if you look back to the first video that I did which was Sailor Venus, uh, my skills were nowhere near where they are today and I'm not saying I'm the greatest makeup artist in the world. I do have a certain skill set now and I am, you know, at that time I was just a girl who loved makeup and now I actually am a professional makeup artist and you can really see that, you know, that arc. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I had so much fun with this series, so much fun with this particular video. I really, really, truly love this look. I've been wanting to do a primary color look for a long time, and this is sort of the great excuse to do it. I will have all the information for all the products that I used on my blog, so I encourage you guys to go check that out and see the other videos in this series. So anyway, without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start this thing off with Too Faced Shadow Insurance all over the lid. And kind of extend that just a little bit since we're taking our shadows out a little further than normal today. Alright, then I gave my brows a light fill. I find that filling my brows in first kind of helps me to map out where I'm going to place my shadows. Speaking of placement of shadows, I'm going to use some scotch tape today. Gotta love my little tape dispenser there. Using the tape gives you a nice crisp edge. Just make sure that you place the tape on something sticky before you put it around your eye area, otherwise it'll be way too sticky. Um, but I place it and then I actually stick it onto my eye top to bottom. I find that this actually gives me the smoothest edge and that way you don't end up with bumps and skips like you can. Now we're taking an Inglot shadow. This is 64 AMC and this is just a pencil type brush I've had for years. Unfortunately it was like a gift with purchase so I can't tell you where to get it. Sorry. Uh, and we are doing a cut crease. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing a nice curved line trying to avoid my actual crease because uh, doing so will give me a nice large looking lid area which will make my eye look really big but then also it'll make it easier for me to have this stark contrast between the black and the yellow. So I'm just building that up. As you can see, this shadow is like crazy stupid pigmented. It's so amazing. I'm just completely in love with Inglot shadows. <laughs> um, kind of drawing that, giving it a little bit of a curve. You know, we're going to be going in with some blue shadows, so it doesn't have to be completely perfect, but I just wanted to map out what I was doing, and this creates the base for the blues. Alright, now I'm taking another shadow. This is uh, Inglot's 480. I'm using that with like an angled fluffy blender shadow brush thingy. It's from Sigma, I forget the number of it, but it's kind of like the MAC 275. And in a minute here I'm going to pick up the 275 anyway. Uh, this, sh this color is kind of like a true blue. And it's so pigmented I actually had to wipe off the shadow. It was insane. I've never had that happen before. Oh, I mean, maybe a little bit, but I mean, there's just like way, way, way too much. And you saw I just like touched a couple times. Inglot shadows are just phenomenal. I have no words. Uh, so anyway, I placed that and blended it, and then I picked up a little bit of Sugar Pills, what's the name of this shadow, I forget, After Party, and uh, kind of blended that over where I had the Inglot shadow. So I'm just creating all these layers of color that makes it look so dimensional and gives it this beautiful look, and no one shadow could have done it alone. Uh, just blending all those. And there you see I picked up the MAC version of this brush. This is the holiday version of it, but I actually prefer it to like the full size version. So go figure, sometimes those holiday sets aren't too bad at all. And to think I just bought that set because I wanted the bag. Don't judge me. I'm using a NYX Jumbo Pencil as a sticky base and I'm blending that all over the whole lid with a flat uh, concealer, synthetic brush. It's gonna make the colors that I put on top of it pop so much more vibrantly. And then over the base, I'm putting uh, Sugar Pills eyeshadow in Buttered Cupcake. This is just an insanely, insanely bright matte yellow. And you can see I'm just sort of carving out that lid. And do you see how it just makes the lid look so much bigger? And then over the top of that, I put Inglot's 747 eyeshadow. 
just because it photographs really well and it is a little bit lighter of a yellow color and also the sparkle in it is kind of amazing just saying thought you should know now for eyeliner eyeliner definitely makes this look I'm using an elf cream gel liner thingy and a angled brush uh, so I just kind of lined it out and then I met the color in the crease I wanted to give kind of like a really bold almost cartoony kind of line considering that this is based after like a manga slash cartoon character uh, so as I said I kind of met my wing in the crease and then curved it around into the crease and then I used the gel liner to carve out that crease to make it look super crisp and super defined and then I slightly swept the shadow into the crease then I went back with the brush that I used the black eyeshadow and then I'd go back in with the gel liner brush to carve out a little bit more of the crease and then I'd go back with the shadow brush and I did a whole lot of back and forth back and forth and that's what creates that beautiful blended but crisp line is just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that and that's just pretty much true for any makeup look. And never be afraid to invite your fingers to the party. Anyone who says you can't use your fingers for makeup application, as long as they're clean, I, I say, you know, why not? Just thickening that line up a little bit. I wanted it to be super, super, super bold. I just love makeups like this where the colors and everything are so bold and intense and just rawr. All right, and then for a little highlight action, I busted out with my MAC 252 brush and Sugar Pills Taco eyeshadow just took that right under the brow bone, or I'm sorry, not the brow bone, rather the eyebrow. So I placed most of the color at the peak, or the arc, or the arch, rather, can't talk today, of my brow, and then just added a little bit throughout the whole under brow, if you will. And then I just kind of share the love all over. Blend it out, make it work. Tim Gunn it. A uh, little bit more blending, you know, it's all about hurry up and blend. <laughs> Then I busted out my e.l.f. eyeshadow transformer palette and I used the white violet duochrome thingy to turn my eyeshadows into Optimus Prime. Okay, I know I've used that joke before, but it's still funny. At least it is to me. Anyway, this really just adds a certain Zaza Zoo. And then I removed the tape, which is obviously awesome feeling. But do you see how I have that super, super straight line because of the way I placed my tape? Awesome! Okay, then I applied some badass lashes. Then I dipped back into Sugar Pills Taco Eyeshadow, and I used that with a very small shader brush just to kind of lighten up that inner corner of the cut crease just to really make it stand out and look super crisp. Then I took a blue eyeliner. This is from Milani. This is one of their Liquify liners, the automatically propelling ones. These ones actually have glitter in them. I've reviewed them, and I absolutely love, 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 love them. This one's sort of a royal blue with a... Uh, purple glitter in it. It's actually really similar to my nail color that I'm wearing right there. You could definitely do a darker color in your inner rim. Uh, at this point I didn't in the video but I did when I went to take pictures of it. I found that with those crazy insane contacts it really made my eyes look super creepy and freaky and stuff when I didn't have the darkness around the inner rim. Zhuzh the hair darling, zhuzh the hair. <laughs> Chauncey. Seriously, you have no idea how much video footage I edit out of me zhuzhing my hair. It's kind of sad. Alright, and so you know I had to do a red lip with this. Uh, I did a red lip for the tuxedo mask video. And obviously Sailor Moon's colors are blue, yellow, and red. So red had to be invited to the party. This is a wet and wild lipstick. This costs like, I don't know, $2 or something. And it's insane. The color is called Stoplight Red or something. The number on it is 911. I love, love this lipstick. It's very, very similar to MAC's Ruby Woo lipstick. It's just not as matte. Uh, Ruby Roo Woo has almost like a crayon type texture where it's super, super dry and really hard to work with. Whereas this one's a lot easier to apply and I could actually use a lip brush with it. I find that I really, I mean I would be painting my lips for like an hour if I tried to use a lip brush with Ruby Woo. At least that's my personal experience. Uh, and then this is another 228 by MAC. I like this one as a lip brush quite a bit. You can obviously use whatever works for you. And obviously I'm lining my lips. I didn't do a liner or even a primer with this. 
Um, and actually at the intro of the video you can see a little bit of funniness going on because I took a little bite of pasta and my husband cooked dinner. So yeah, definitely wear primer. That's a good thing to do. Don't forget to get those inner and outer corners and get everything all filled in. You don't want to look like you skipped the spot when you do a really bold lip color. I always pay special attention to make sure that my scar is covered. Don't forget to give your lips a nice little pressing together to make sure that everything's set up for success. And with that, we are completed with our look, and that is the end of the Sailor Moon series. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and have enjoyed this series, even though it went on way, way, way too long. And if you'd like to see the other videos in this series, I'm going to go ahead and put a bunch of links in the down description box thingamajig uh, so that you can find them. And this chair is really squeaky fun times. Uh, really quick before I let you guys go, I just want to uh, show you guys something very special to me, my Sailor Moon doll. Um, her skirt's kind of purple now because she was in a box in the attic for a long time, but it's an attic, not attic. I just love playing with her as a child and well, Barbies in general, but I just, I really, really loved Sailor Moon. It was the first time I loved something that much. And so to be able to kind of share that with you guys has been really special to me. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and all the other Sailor Moon series videos. If you'd like to see those videos, I'm going to go ahead and have a link to them in the down bar. And I think that's pretty much it, you guys. I'll see you guys in my next video. Remember to be vintage or tacky or Sailor Moon. Just be yourself.